Yes, uh, this is a new video from me, Andrew Collins. I um, want to talk to you about the Red Deer people. Uh, now, these were uh, skeletal remains, uh, including uh, fragments of skulls that were found in a place called the Red Deer Cave, hence obviously the name of the people, um, in a place, uh, in two caves actually, in the Yunnan uh, province of South China. Um, now, this was at the beginning of the uh, 2010s, and the importance about them is they, they lived around 40,000 years ago, probably down to about 11,000 years ago. They very clearly were associated with this cave, um, or two caves, I should say. And the thing was that people like Chris Stringer, a British paleoanthropologist who is the go-to for the media as far as you know what the hell's going on here basically said that the strange physiology of the red deer people particularly the fact that they had these um you know, quite wide um uh, cheekbones coming out suggested that they weren't anatomical modern humans and that they could be the newly discovered Denisovans. Um, and back in 2012, when a lot of this was being stated, uh, we, we didn't have much at all with Denisovans. All we had was obviously the genome, uh, which had been taken from a small pinky bone, basically a small little finger, um, that had been found in the Denisova cave in the Altai Mountains of Siberia very close to the borders with China, uh, Kazakhstan, um, and what other one? Um, well, Russia, China, uh, there's one other one I can't remember at the moment. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Basically, Chris Stringer and other colleagues suggested that the Red Deer people were in the right place to be Denisovans. And you'll find this referenced out there. I think it's even on the Wikipedia page uh, for them. And that was it. And the problem with that is that all of the pieces of evidence that we've got for the Denisovans so far, other than this, suggest that they were of extremely large size. For instance, the, the molars that were found in the Denisova cave, um, fragments of uh, a skull um, that were found in the Denisova cave that were incredibly thick in, in nature, the jawbone. The mandible that was found in the, the Bashia cave um, in Zoe, which is in the Tibetan plateau. Please excuse any uh, pronunciations that I get wrong, which obviously uh, is today in the northeastern part of the plateau and is actually in China. It's not even in what was formerly Tibet. Um, this was revealed a few years ago, and this is this was huge, and so were the molar teeth. And then, of course, you've got the dragon man skull that was found in the 1930s um, and was brought to the attention of the scientific community just a few years ago. And uh, this was found at a place called Harbin uh, in Manchuria, which is in the extreme northern part of China. And beyond that, by the way, is Mongolia and to the, the east, Siberia. So not too far from some of the areas we've already been talking about. But all of these are of extremely large size. The dragon man skull is the largest skull that's ever been studied by science. And the fact that the Chinese um, paleoanthropologists decided that it belonged to a completely new type of, of, of unknown human they called it homo longi which basically means dragon man basically um, due to the fact that the local river um, bore the name dragon um, so they and it was actually found when they were digging um, the piles for a bridge um, in the 1930s there a local man found it realized its significance the Japanese had taken over the air at the time so he actually buried it in a 
um, a well and only revealed its whereabouts to I think either his son or his grandson, I can't remember now, um, just before he died. And this was only just a few years ago. So obviously the, the you know, the, the person that found it revealed it to uh, a local university, the anthropologists there, and they studied it. But all Western um, paleoanthropologists that have looked into the dragon man skull have said, almost certainly this fits the physiology of a Denisovan. Everything about it, the thickness of the skull, the size, the fact that the Tibetan plateau, Mandeville, almost fits exactly on it. The molars are the same, all the rest of it. So almost certainly the dragon man skull is that of a Denisovan. But because obviously Chris Strigger and other of his colleagues had suggested that the red deer people were Denisovans, this caused a problem because the red deer people were not very tall at all. So this suggested that Denisovans were of, um, you know, average height, basically, whereas all the other evidence was suggesting that they were incredibly large. So this was a slight problem. And obviously other people um, like Tom Hyam, for instance, of, of Oxford, has suggested that the, the Denisovans in Ireland, Southeast Asia could even have become the, um, the, the, the hobbits there, Homo floresiensis, you know, from the island of Flores in Indonesia. But there's absolutely no evidence of that whatsoever. None, absolutely. But we have just heard from a new study that they have extracted for the first time the genome of the red deer people. So one of the fragments that was found in one of those caves has been shown to, uh, to provide enough DNA to be tested so they've been able to sequence the, the genome. And as I said, this is of an individual that lived about 14,000 years ago. And the important thing is that it is not Denisovan at all. And this is incredibly good news. Uh, it is anatomical modern human, Homo sapiens, um, with a very small amount of uh, Neanderthal ancestry and a very small amount of Denisovan and, uh, ancestry. And what I mean by this is that almost everybody in the Eurasian continent uh, have probably anything up to two to 3% uh, DNA of Neanderthals. And depending on where you are, mostly in the Eastern part of the continent, Southern part of the continent, a lot of people, a lot of populations have Denisovan DNA, anything from what, zero, up to about 5%. 5% is often found in island Southeast Asia, a place like the Philippines, um, you know, uh, Papua New Guinea, this sort of area. Um, but normally it would be probably about two to 3% for people in the Eastern part of the Eurasian continent. So that's what the red deer people have. They are modern humans. They might look a little bit different to us, but they're modern humans just like us. And of course, what this does is rule them out as um, first, gen second, third generation Denisovans, Denisovan hybrids. Um, so that the, the, the physiology that they have does not come from the Denisovans. And this is brilliant really, because it now means that we can concentrate on the idea that the Denisovans were very large in size. And Ben Sveola, um, the paleoanthropologist uh, from uh, on the university, I think it's the University of Toronto, if I remember rightly, you know, he's made statements about the Denisovans and said that they probably in size and appearance would look like a very large uh, American football player. Um, so in other words, a big guy, basically. And, and, and this is what the bone suggests. So, you know, this is the story that was actually in Science News, what is it, Science Daily uh, came out in the, in the last day, 
uh, for the first time, researchers successfully sequenced the genome of ancient human fossils from the late uh, Pleistocene in southern China. Uh, they are published July, uh, July 14th in the journal Current Bio Biology, suggests that the mysterious hominin uh, belonged to an extinct maternal branch of modern humans that might have contributed to the origin of Native Americans. That's the other thing. There are certain uh, characteristics about the DNA, and I'm going to assume that this is the mitochondrial DNA that is going to be linking it with the peoples of North America, the indigenous people, the first peoples there. Um, and it's even suggested in this study that this could, this could mean that people were migrating north from South China, from the Yunnan pro province, uh, going through North China or possibly through Japan, um, and then eventually up to the Bering Strait and crossing into uh, North America via uh, Alaska. Um, and obviously forming part of the earliest uh, Native American peoples there. Of course, this ignores completely the possibility that some of these people could have been going across on maritime journeys and that this is how some of these migrations took place. This is something that I've talked about in the book, um, Denisovan Origins uh, with uh, Greg Little, and obviously Graham Hancock talked about it in America before. You know, there is a lot of evidence suggesting that there were migrations across the Pacific Ocean, basically. Anyway, what else does it say here? Well, not a lot, really. Um, I mean, quite clearly, I need to get the, uh, the actual paper itself. Uh, but the two Ks, by the way, is uh, the, the Maladul or red, uh, red, red Deer Cave. That's the name of one of them. Uh, it doesn't give the name of the other one here. But the importance of all of this, if you want to put it in a nutshell, is that people like Chris Trigger, who obviously got a lot of time for, make statements in the media. And this almost becomes read thereafter that this is what is as far as our ancestry is concerned. And this is included the fact that if the Denisovans were the Red Deer people, then they were very small. We can ignore that completely and go back to the idea that they were definitely of great size and probably girth as well. And I would compare them to the size of, of you know, WWE wrestlers, um, you know, as I said, Benz Viola, he compared them to the size of very large uh, American football players. And I think that that's fine. So that's about it for the moment. Um, let me know your thoughts. Um, please give this a like if you liked what I said. Uh, and we'll have more of this as we go along. Um, and um, that's about it. Um, obviously, subscribe if you're are not already subscribed. So uh, thank you very much. And I 